So Meg Gleesner is joining us today. She is a Seattle mother of eight, grandmother of five, and wife to her husband for 30 years. She podcasts at Letters From Home, where she seeks to capture the heartbeat of amazing everyday people that inspire her to love Jesus and her community more deeply. And sharing these conversations with the world is why she has the podcast. So welcome, Meg. Thanks, Jen. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. I'm so excited to hang out with you today. Yeah, thanks. I'm glad you're here. So we know a little tiny bit about you, but why don't you tell us a little bit more about who you are, where you're from, maybe where you grew up, a bit about you and your family? Sure. Yeah, my my husband and I, we moved up to Seattle from we met in California and married, you know, at a, we met each other at a Bible study in college and we moved up to Seattle 30 years ago to uh, we to plant a church and we have stayed up here and eight kids and five grandkids later we're still serving the lord up here in seattle and of course like everyone it looks a little different during quarantine right you know we're doing home church and having you know celebrating communion in our living room and watching sermons and and uh we our kids are ages 30 to 15 and we have two left so you might hear a french horn in the background <laughs> because my kids are in <laughs> class down the hallway and so yeah we're uh we're just busy ser serving god here and, and you know trying to trying to deal with everything that's going on just like everyone else yes so i know seattle seattle's a beautiful place um and i enjoy the city and it's funny because whenever i go to places that are known for being cloudy it's always sunny when i go <laughs> <laughs> so i haven't been to seattle when the sun isn't shining but are you are you really close to the city or are you out more like are you on one of the islands around there or how close are you to Seattle? We live, Seattle proper is one block away from us. We are seven miles from downtown and I would agree, Seattle is such a beautiful place. And yeah, there's precipitation 300 days a year and we don't mind, it's home and we love Seattle. So I, I, I feel blessed that the Lord put us right here because we're willing to serve wherever, you know? That's great. <laughs> Well, let's start talking a little bit about what it is that you know about. And that's really, you know, sibling relationships with eight kids. You have a lot of experience with with that and really how getting them to get along. And um, I know when we adopted our littles, someone told us, they said, you're not just adding two people to the family, you are exponentially increasing relationships because you've got relationship with mom, with dad, with big brother, with big sister, and, and you get this web of relationships. So when you have eight kids and two parents, that's a lot of relationships to, to manage and manage well. And uh, conflict is bound to happen in that. So what is it with your kids that caused the most conflict? Yeah, well, that's a great question. So, so many things, right? When they're, they're little, there's so many opportunities for conflict. And I know during quarantine, so many moms are just, you're just overwhelmed because there's conflict all the time and they're just putting out all the fires, right? But I think, um, yeah, so I think for me, when they were little, the whole sharing thing you know, that's mine, you can't play with it, you know, little, little game things, little conflicts during, during games, like um, wanting to cheat, or if they're, you know, sitting there playing like mm -hmm. a little game, and one person loses, or one person wants to win, and then <clears throat> they cheat. So, you know, these are uh, some of the, some of the big things that come up, not speaking nice to each other, uh, getting frustrated, expressing their frustrations with each other, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of words and interpersonal things come up on a daily yeah. basis, you know, and then there's also hitting, there's, there's biting. So it's, it's like physical stuff, word right. stuff, sharing all those things. Well, and that sharing is a big one. When the more people you have, the more you're sharing naturally. So in some ways, the more important it becomes to have your own your own things that you can control and not have to share. So that that adds an interesting dynamic at times too. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a hard balance to find right for them to be able to say they have something that, especially the older kids where their little siblings aren't gonna just always be crashing their blocks and ruining their little creation that they made or that they actually are running around their, their little bike or, or whatever and then it's theirs and they get 
their space, but also teaching them. And I, one of the helpful things that we've done with the kids is if a kid comes, would come up and they'd want, they say, may I have a turn or can I have a turn? And then that gives, gives them to see it and want it. And they have something that they can say. And then the person who's writing it, they can say in a little while. So they've got their space and no one's going to bother their space. And, you know, it can kind of teach both of those things at the same time, right? Absolutely. Yes. Making a need or a request known and being able to graciously respond with a boundary is, yes, that's excellent. Which takes work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it does take work. Yes. Yes. And just when you think you got it, then they become teenagers and uh, yeah. <laughs> it all shifts again. <laughs> For sure. So what was the dynamic like in your house with um, with teenagers and young adults and littles and, you know, sort of there becomes a disparity of um, interest level and and things like that. How did that work in your family? Yeah, that's a good that's a good question. Yeah, there is a dynamic with different ages. And I think in our home when all of the kids were little. So starting with the older ones, when they were little, we really tried hard and imperfectly one thing I want to say is this, this mom knows she needs Jesus. And this mom knows she didn't come with a manual. Uh, you know, I, none of the kids come with manuals, so we're figuring it out. So when I say that we worked so hard when they were little to set a really good tone of love mm -hmm. and teamwork and really taking the time to work through some of those things like, like sharing, you know, yeah. for, you know, like we said, there's, there's a sharing, there's a thing, there's the, uh, name calling or maybe one kid's having a hard time with the other kid to to stop and to be proactive about what we're doing so today you know we're sitting around reading with the kids today we are going to think about how can we be a blessing to somebody today you ask the two-year-old how can you be a blessing mm -hmm. i'm going to go potty you know i'm going to ask mommy what i can do to help i'm going to ask my brother can I help you? And so when you when you take those extra minutes and be mm -hmm. a little more proactive about it to say, now, you know, especially if it's someone that you knew they had a hard time with that kid, oh, well, let's go see if there's something we can appreciate about the blocks that he's building. I like how tall your tower is, you know? And so it takes probably as much energy as putting out all the fires, but to s step back and to start fresh and to, to just be more proactive about the direction that we're going to set. So I think setting that tone of cooperation and love and appreciation for siblings, like having a, a devotion at the dinner table, and then you're saying, oh, let's pray for people. And, or you mm -hmm. take one of the kids and you're praying with them at their bedtime and you're praying for their siblings, or you're praying for daddy. Daddy works so hard. Like when he's gone all day, he works so hard. Let's take a minute and pray for daddy. So it's, it's that being proactive to set that tone Mm -hmm. to, and then they're thinking about, oh yeah, I should think dad works. Dad, thank you for working so hard today. Or that older sibling. Oh, I like how you're doing your schoolwork. You know, it just gets their mind focused because the natural mind is to be selfish, right? I mean, right. I, I fight against that still. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, and that's a good one because, you know, as a mom, it, it can feel like you're constantly putting out fires and it takes a lot of energy to do that. And so sometimes it feels like um, focusing on the root causes or the foundational, you know, pieces, the building blocks takes a lot more work. And some days it does take more work, but it has a better payoff <laughs> than just fighting fires all the time. So that was, I, I appreciate how you shared how you intentionally worked at that because, um, some kids are easygoing and you know our our firstborn was very easygoing and our secondborn went along for the ride and so we didn't put a lot of hard work in with those two because it didn't feel like we needed mm. to and then the third came along and we realized that we really should have been doing some things differently from the get go it's harder to to change course when when they're older right. so <laughs> so your kids have just sort of always been on board with this because this is what you've done from the get go. They have, they really have. And, you know, but when they're little, you know, I think one of the things that really help with that is, and again, it's not perfect, but you know, like having a house meeting and saying, mm -hmm. okay, now let's talk about 
like, who do we want to have for dinner this week? Or is there some family we can write a letter to? And, you know, or you bring a scripture. Uh, one of the early scriptures we had the kids memorize is, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart is working for God, not for men. And, you know, and so they're like, oh, I want to work hard, you know. So, you know, they, they, you know, they hear that and you, you focus on that, of course. Uh, you know, when you have your, your little house chore list and mm -hmm. you got that one kid who's not wanting to do it and it takes them an hour to do five minute job and your whole day is exasperated because you're trying to help this one kid make the bed or the six year old that's talking you into circles, even though you graduated from college <laughs> and you can't, you, can't, you yes. get on these bunny trails and you're thinking, wait, that room is, clean. my one daughter would talk me into circles. Isn't that, my, mom, my room's clean. No, your room's not clean because you have stuff on your floor. And then you just realize that was a 15 minute conversation because this kid doesn't want to accept responsibility. Right, so, right. So yeah, I think having a house meeting where you setting a tone and talking about those things is really healthy. And, you know, having, having little prayer times with the kids, like about how, what is, uh, one of my favorite things was what is our contribution in the house well dad mm -hmm. is working and you know and you know and maybe mom's working too or, or whatever and we say and i can ask to do to help or i get to do my jobs or i can take care of myself and my, you know and it's like you just get more ownership in everything the kids are are doing and it really pays it really does pay off so much in the teen years when you have that strong foundation. And, and you know what, sometimes we lose it as moms. I mean, I yelled at my kids, I'm not proud of it. Yep. And saying, I'm sorry, and asking forgiveness and having a fresh start the next day, giving our kids the fresh start, the, the one button pusher, pushed your button 20 times yesterday mm -hmm. to have a great prayer time to clear your heart and mind and give them a fresh start the next day, right? Yes. Well, and what a good thing to model for them, you know, yeah. making mistakes, but correcting those mistakes and, you know, repairing that. So, totally. well, that's good. So it sounds like you had a lot of opportunistic approach, you know, we're going to take advantage of this moment, but also a lot of intentionality behind that. And um, I think sometimes that's the harder part. Sometimes it's easy to see the moment, but it's harder to, to set out with the intentional <laughs> plan and stick to it so and, and you know yeah i mean you know i with eight kids i spent i believe it was 16 or 17 years straight either pregnant or nursing and mm. those years are hard and to all the mamas out there of course some days we're just trying to get through the day we're, we don't have any energy to pr be proactive we're just trying to help people not hurt each other we're trying to make sure they get fed we're trying to make sure we get to even say hi to our, our husband and you know like or or the moms who are out there working or single moms they're working and then they're coming home and trying to unwind you know we yeah. can only do what we can do so i don't i hope nobody feels like a heavy burden that they have to do everything god knows our situation every day but when we do have that energy to lay aside the phone or whatever and i think i think one of those really hard things but it's so helpful somebody gave us advice when our older kids were little and they said, you know, don't give your kids a lot of unsupervised playtime. And, mm. you know, it, it's so true. I liken it to like the dynamite, <laughs> the dynamite going off, you know, like when kids are together, you can hear the tension start to rise, right? You can hear the arguments start to happen. And so as a mom, one thing I've, you know, always valued choosing, especially when they were littles, when you hear the blood pressure start to go up, when you hear them, you know, you, you come over and you stop and you, and you, you try and help them work it out themselves and say, now, now, wait a second, what are we talking about? Okay. And then you just refocus the situation mm -hmm. and, and you can also use your house meetings for those things as well saying, you know, lately in our home, it seems like, what do you feel like we do well? as the Gleesners, what have we been doing well, you know, and what's something we need to work on? And even the little ones will say two, three, four, I need to have a good attitude or mm. I need to not be so fussy or I, I need to eat my vegetables <laughs> or, mm -hmm. you know, and you're like, that's good. So in a non-confrontational time, we ask everyone, what do we want to do? So you're encouraging what they're doing well. And then, 
having them own a little bit that we're going to work on. And you say, yes, we've all been doing bad at sharing this week, you know, mommy and daddy too. And you say, we're going to restart. We're going to restart this. And this is a great thing. I love being able to say, we're going to start fresh. Let's work on this tomorrow. And so there's always mm -hmm. room for growth. Even if you feel like, oh my goodness, my kids are teens and I wreck them. No, we can still have a meeting. We can still talk about what's important and what we value and have a fresh start. There's always room for growth. Yes. Do-overs are so, <laughs> there's been several <laughs> days where I have um, put the kids back in bed and we said, we're going to get up again and start the day over. So, <laughs> oh, that is awesome. <laughs> always room for a do-over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's great. So are your, um, your married kids and grandkids, are they nearby? Are they littles now in the mix of this family or are they further away and not engaged as frequently? They're further away. They're all, I've okay. got people out of country, but, uh, and mm -hmm. out of st state. We live in Seattle. We have people in Eastern Canada, Fairbanks, Alaska, mm -hmm. San Diego, El Paso, Texas. It's like, could someone stay yes, close? So nowhere close. So mama can love on them. But last week, <laughs> right. our daughter's buying a house and she's pregnant. And my granddaughter just turned five yesterday. And they were mm -hmm. here a couple of weeks ago. And those same things that we did with our, our kids when they were little was reading a book and you're reading a Bible story. I read our granddaughter Shiloh a book and I was reading her Bible stories and telling her about Jesus. And it was so precious because you just, like you do with the kids and probably the most important thing the kids learn from us, I would say two things, is they see the image of us spending time in God's word. They see my face when I'm patient or when I'm saying sorry after I wasn't patient. It's what they see us doing. They see us loving one another as husband and wife and our communication. They see all of that and that's so important. And so our granddaughter, she came and we got to talk with her and have her go pick out a Bible story, crawl on our lap and pray. And then I think she's like, God made the stars. I thought elephants made the stars. And I said, no, God did. And we were just outside and looking at the, and then um, the next day we were sitting for lunch and she said, Grammy. And she was four at the time. Jesus, Jesus just told me we forgot to pray. Oh. And I grabbed her a little, it was just a little protein snack. So I didn't, you know, and, and so we prayed and then she said, Grammy, while I was outside playing, I was thinking and praying for mommy and daddy. I was praying for Grammy and Poppy. I was praying for my uncles and this is, and I don't think she even, but just that conversation, she soaked it in. And then I got a text from my daughter Havala three days ago. And she said, Shiloh asked me, Mommy, what else did Grammy teach you about Jesus? Oh. And so the best thing we have to give Jen is our hearts for the Lord. And so mm. it's really as mom has taken that minute to get our hearts right with the Lord. It sounds like a, a simple thing, but that helps with sibling rivalry. That helps mm -hmm. set that tone for teamwork and love because we are working, trusting God for ourselves too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes. <laughs> I know I, uh, we have a mutual friend with a grace enough podcast. And I just think of that. I don't even have to listen to the podcast. I just have to think of the name and go, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I need today. Grace yes. enough. So, <laughs> um, so you've said two things that, you know, it's really, it's start early and keep at it. But what if you're coming in to a situation where, you know, maybe, I don't know, you've adopted older kids or you're a stepmom to older kids, or you just didn't start early. What would you tell that mom uh, in how she can, something she could do today to start to foster this with her kids? Uh, I would say there's, there is always hope. God is big. There's always room for growth. And, and I would say to just pick something, pick one thing, you know, it helps to pick one thing we we when they were little we just picked a cup probably our biggest phrase was how can we be a blessing hmm. it just sounds like because because one of our values as a couple was that our home would be used to bless a world so for mm -hmm. the mom who's starting out or feeling overwhelmed like there's a million things one thing pick one thing that you think you know it would be you know talk if you're a single mom just you know think about what's really important to you in your home or 
um, if you're a, a new stepmom, congratulations, that's so exciting. Then, you know, maybe think what's one thing that I would love for us to work on and talk with your husband and have a little meeting and define what that might look like. If mm -hmm. it's like, what would respect look like more in the house? And then if it's teenagers and they're, how can we show you respect? Because mm -hmm. we want to respect you. Like we are a team here. How can we do better at this? And then also plan positive family times together that aren't confrontational moments. You know, mm -hmm. if that teenager that's hard to listen, uh, that's having a hard time, support them in whatever way you can. If they're if they're playing the ukulele, you know, have them play a song like, oh, could you play that ukulele? Could you, cr I love when you play the, you know, like mm -hmm. we just want to en encourage that one thing that is good and kind of let a lot of the other stuff slide because they're going to be overwhelmed. And goodness, I think of how much we've changed since we were teenagers, you know? Mm -hmm. So if we give our, our kids a break and just work on one or two things at a time, you know? Yeah, I think that's good. I, um, I was talking to somebody earlier today and uh, that was kind of her advice in, in talking about uh, a hard marriage is you can control only yourself. Yeah. And so I think as moms, we have to remember that if we expect our children to control themselves and respond a way that we want uh, them to respond to their siblings, we have to be the ones to do that first and model it and remind them and and all of that so i love that idea of having a really having a mantra to go with what it is you know how can i be a blessing or you know what is it whatever it is that your family wants to be known for or start to see a change with so that's great advice for sure so you have a podcast and uh, i know you've had your kids on in different ways and at different times um, have they been involved with it in getting it going in more than just uh reading reading things for you or sharing thoughts have they helped with any of the production of it in in almost every way our oldest daughter did the artwork for it and you know before i started it i just really had prayed and i wanted the blessing of the family before starting because i didn't want to do something and them feeling like it was taking away from anything with them and the kids, my husband, my older kids, they all said, mom, this is great. We love the idea, go for mm -hmm. it. And so one of my daughters did the artwork for it. My son has, has sons have written the inter, the music and the transitions. Mm -hmm. My daughter Eden's reading 2 Corinthians 3.3, 3, which is the foundational verse uh, for the podcast that our lives are like a letter. She reads the verse. My other son who did theater, he's he reads the intro and outro and my teenager, he's been my technical director. He helped me get signed up. You know, all the things we have to learn, like, um, oh, wait, I need a platform to put the podcast and I need right. to have a website. <laughs> so he's been my technical director. He actually just used that on his college applications. He's a senior this That's year. That's great. And so, yeah, everyone has participated. I even have my granddaughter on there saying, here's my Grammy and <laughs> lots of little moments. So when you feel that you have the people that are the wind in your sails. Again, it's that one thing that I just, you know, there's things we haven't done well. We, we all struggle with our weight, you know, like, <laughs> but you know, my family, there is a sense of teamwork mm. and uh, I, I don't know what I would do without it. It's a blessing to have that wind in your sails helping, helping you along. So, yeah. Well, and how fun with the podcast that it's sort of a tangible thing to point to and, and how, everyone gets along and you're all you're doing this together so that's really neat um so tell me a little bit more about um about the podcast itself and, and who you talk to and why you talk to them i think of people that inspire me and you know like one of my friends Catherine. she's an emergency foster mom and mm -hmm. i know she had 30 kids over the years. I'm like, I would love to help get her. I want to hear her story all yeah. and not in just little bits. And if I'm inspired by her story, maybe someone else would too. And so just hearing her story or my friend, my, my oldest daughter, Naomi's friend, Elizabeth, who gave birth in the back of an emergency vehicle 10 weeks early to somebody who had never done a birth before. And she's walking them through the, you know, and I just think 
seeing how God moved in each person's life through these things. So I have moms on there. I have one lady who lived in Gabon for 40 years and helped translate a translation of the Bible. I have a, mm-hmm. a man on there who's who's done like almost 200 funerals. And I leave funerals encouraged. And so I think of things that inspire me in stories where I see the hand of God and I think, you know, how would this encourage someone else? And I have like this huge list of people that I want to have on. I just, um, you know, scheduled some more interviews. It's super exciting. It's a great, I get encouraged in the process while I'm mm-hmm. hearing how God worked in their life. And then I preparing a little blessings for everyone else too. So. Everyone else just gets to listen in as you, <laughs> as you yeah. get encouraged. Yeah. If you have an hour, it's a longer one, but you know, you can mm-hmm. get little bits here. I know it's tough for moms to little sound bites, but uh, yeah. I guarantee it will be encouraging. <laughs> oh, that's great. And, and it's fun to, it's, fun to pursue those stories like that, you know, cause someone like, like your friend, who's the emergency foster mom, she's just living her life. And to have someone say, wait, tell me, I want to hear. I mean, that's got to encourage her too, to know that the people notice and they don't just take it for granted. So I think that's really, that's really neat. Well, one thing that I ask everybody, it's a little bit more lighthearted, um, but what is your favorite gadget? Okay, it's a stretch to call this a gadget, but okay. I'm going to say bean bags and bookshelves. So we, when we bought our house uh, 15 years ago, we got have bean bags in the house. So our youngest has always had bean bags, and having kids just it's like free little exercise thing inside the house. Kids can jump and I, I actually have a picture of my now 15 year old playing the French horn in the other room there if you hear that <laughs> I have a picture of him jumping off of a counter with a cape uh at age four right into this bean bag and I think it made my mother's heart stop uh and it did mine too <laughs> but bean bags are so helpful with exercise and fun and just being able to plop down and read a book it's mm-hmm. great for when their friends come over as teenagers. We still have those bean bags and those teenagers and college students love it. And then um, something we just put up uh, two months ago, which I love, is those little bookshelves. You know, like when you go into a doctor's office, the ones that go on the wall with the little oh, wood yeah. across it. Mm-hmm. We got those. So we have like the little board books on the bottom. And it makes me so happy every time I look at it. I wish I would have had it younger because reading's always been a big part of our home. And now... Like I said, with the grandkids, when Shiloh was here last week, she went in there and picked a book off the shelf. And then we go pop on a beanbag and read it. Or so. so anyway, beanbags and bookshelves. <laughs> oh, and how fun. And then you can rotate the books out so that it's something new and different every, yeah. every time. Yes, I can see as a homeschooler, that would be great because you could have your themed books up there. <laughs> yeah, once <laughs> you get the past topic. the stage of kids are eating and breaking everything. It's just, it's a yeah. whole new world when you don't have to worry about kids choking on stuff. It's kind of fun being a grandma. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> you get all the, all the uh, perks and uh, the responsibility, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, how can people connect with you? Where can they find you? Well, I have a website, lettersfromhomepodcast.com. So yeah, you can just go there and check things out and um, and then I have an app. I don't know if you're going to talk. You want to- yes, yeah. I was just going to say you have an app to go along with that. So people can listen to all your past episodes and never miss a new one. Tell us about the app. Yeah. So it's cool if you have an Android or any kind of phone, but the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store, if you go and just pop in letters from home uh, podcast, it'll pop up. You can download it on your phone it's free and then you know there's a little rainbow on there so when you're like oh i have some time for a test one you just look click the rainbow and you'll have a a little bit of heaven brought to your doorstep oh i love that (laughs) oh well thank you this was it was fun getting to know you a little better and it was encouraging to to hear about um your kids and because there are days that i go i don't know that they're gonna make it and then there are days where i'm so proud of them so (laughs) Thanks for giving me hope for the uh, <laughs> the outcome with them. So yeah, thanks so much. There's Dave. always hope. I just think of that first verse, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gives the increase. So in a certain sense, as moms, we don't have to have that intense pressure on ourselves. We're just being there. We're just planting seeds and we're just trusting God, right? 
That's right. Oh, well, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Bye.